So my uh, talk for uh, the World uh, Taste and Smell Association, uh, uh, the World uh, Taste and Smell uh, Day 2023 would be uh, with the theme Olfactory Art and Human Being. Um, this presentation is based on the text written for the publication Nouveau Territoire de l'Experience Olfactive. I cannot speak French, I'm sorry. But, um, uh, it is a book which is published by um, uh, Victor Frey now. Yeah, you can uh, Google the title and you will find it. It is uh, published by French uh, Academy um, Architecture Laboratory, Gerufal. Um, yes, I wrote a text about uh, olfactory art in general uh, with uh, some questions uh, that are around, uh, that is uh, from coming from my experiences. Well, um, I give you a short introduction about it. Um, the most uh, important thing we can do as an olfactory artist, uh, I think, is to provide new olfactory experiences for our audiences. The history of olfactory art is actually very short. Uh, if we define it as an art expression using smell in a given or created context, its history may be mere 100 years. Compared to the ancient times, we have more possibilities to utilize our olfactory sense for other purposes than survival. Therefore, there must still be many unveiled olfactive experiences in front of us. I have been active in the field of olfactory art since 2005. Back then, olfactory art was not a frequently used term, so I was calling myself a scent artist or a smell artist. However, uh, when I noticed a few years later that I was more interested in the overall sense rather than the uh, smells only, um, I decided to call myself an olfactory artist, even though it was not uh, frequently used. In the field of media art, uh, where my background lies, actually, the term haptic art was commonly used. So I got inspiration from uh, there. Other olfactory artists uh, known to this day seem to have uh, started using the same term simultaneously, actually. There are plenty of artists in the ol olfactory art scene nowadays. However, the discourse of olfactory art is still relatively unestablished. In this talk, I will present a series of questions that originate from my own experiences, but are relevant to the field of olfactory art in general. Question number one. From uh, what point does the work become original? In the beginning of my career as an olfactory artist, there were fewer olfactory artists around. I made a work focusing on the scent of the city of Singapore. And to my surprise, I was told that it was an imitation of another work. This presented an interesting question. What makes all of olfactory art original? The uh, other work's concept certainly was about the uh, scent of a city, but the approach and the realization were completely different. A scentscape 
or actually a sense of a city is a thing which it tends to be chosen at the beginning of uh, the career of many olfactory artists. When paying attention to the sense of smell, the city smells a little different. So it becomes an inspiration, I guess. Such an approach, uh, including workshops, uh, can be found everywhere nowadays. Likewise, other themes that are likely to be chosen are uh, actually, uh, for example, body order and identity, uh, smell of death or pollution. Thus, um, sense related to a person or something sensational. It made me, qu it made me question from uh, which point does something become imitation rather than an original work of art? If I were the first one to make the uh, soundscape in the world, may I think no one else is supposed to make such work, uh, no matter how she or he thinks of it, because it is my concept? I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> um, this is uh, close to the idea of conceptual art, right? Um, Marcel uh, Duchamp, for example, uh, when he bottled the air of Paris and showed it in an exhibition in New York, the use of scent in art was a unique concept in itself. So likewise, uh, there was a time uh, when a soundscape was unique as a concept, but not anymore. At the end, olfactory art is like any other form of art, like music and visual art. For example, if a composer uh, inspired by the river Danube, a Danube, the river Danube, creates a music on the theme of the Danube. It does not mean that no one else should make the uh, music on the Danube. The Danube is a thing to last, and although it is an inspiration, it is not a concept. When the realization is original, it becomes an original work. Um, question number two, is it a proper medium to convey a message? There's nothing more subjective than smelling, as you know. According to the uh, perfumer, uh, J. Stefan Jelinek, there are four levels to consider regarding how we perceive and interpret a certain scent. Number one, biological level, number two, universal level, number three, cultural level, and number four, individual level. For example, the smell of sulfur is not preferred in the Western culture because it is often associated with rotten egg. However, Japanese people interpret the same scent differently because they associate it with the smell of sulfur in the water of a hot spring. It's relaxing. <laughs> Although it is perceived as uh, stinky, it does not give them a negative association. You might find a certain scent a bad odor while I find it nice. You might even find it unbearable to smell. This could be exactly the inverse for a different smell. A smell that you like could be unbearable to me. Everyone interprets a scent differently. Is it then a proper medium to convey a message in an artwork? To me, it seems too unreliable. If there was a message in my work, I would be um, saying that, um, please smell as you like. How could I give the audience the maximum freedom of how they experience and feel? That is my question. 
This question resulted in a challenge uh, not to give any uh, narrative uh, meanings to the sense in my work. Using this approach, the experience of the work does not change much, even if I change the uh, individual sense in my work, actually. So um, here are some uh, my main approaches uh, to show and uh, with uh, the works that I realized. To this day, I have presented a large variety of works in a different formats and occasions. They revolve, revolve around various concepts, as you see here, which correspond to my research themes. So here in the image, you see my um, research themes and works responding to that. Uh, research theme number one, uh, extraction and representation. Early works of mine, uh, that is about um, the year 2005 to 2008, um, but yeah, the I explore the aspect of uh, re representation by means of uh, extraction in particular. I was obtaining some clues from various cooking methods and achieved some unique distillation skills. Therefore, I looked like a magician that I can extract anything, but uh, that was not my intention. Being able to extract any smell means that you can make an aroma portable or uh, you can present it again um, at other moments in time. Every order has its own spatial axis that is uh, geographical uh, origin and uh, time axis that is uh, historical origin. By shifting it and choosing a unique context, an interesting olfactory ex experience arises. Example works. Aromascape of Singapore. Um, it was the work whose spatial axis is shifted by means of portability of smell. It's extracted, compressed, and it's presented in a museum context, not in a city itself. Huh? The work, uh, oh yeah, I studied uh, the smell of Singapore with students, actually. It was um, um, with the art academy students and extracted it at the workshop, mapped it on a reduced uh, map and displayed it in a museum, Singapore Art Museum. I gave um, a lot of workshops like this before. Also, in my educational context, I always give a um, smell tour together with the extraction workshop. Uh, Juice of War, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was uh, the work uh, whose time axis is shifted by means of uh, reproducibility of smell. I simulated the smell of Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the atomic bombs were dropped in 1945. I used uh, different natural fermentation extraction methods in order to revive the smell in uh, the present time using an original interface for the presentation of the smell. It was exhibited in the Smell of War exhibition uh, curated by Peter de Cooper. It was in Belgium. Theme number two, deconstruction and uh, reconstruction. 
order has the uh, physical characteristic of mixing in a space with other orders. When diffusing scent A and scent B close to each other, the fragrances mix in the room and it becomes impossible to distinguish one from each other unless you get closer. Keeping this characteristic in mind, by placing different aromas at different spots, you can zoom in and zoom out to the different scents by freely moving around. You can smell individual scents by zooming in, that is deconstruction, and you can smell the combined overall uh, fragrance in the space by zooming out, that is reconstruction. This is a somewhat uh, educational group of works that helps to understand and experience the physical behavior of sense in relation to spatial movement. Example works, olfactoscape, deconstruction of Chanel number no. five. The inner wall of a cylindrical space is divided into 10 parts each impregnated with a single fragrance component. The components used here are the top 10 components of Chanel number no. 5. When you stand in the middle, you can smell that mixed combined scent, the smell of Chanel number no. 5. Tangible scent, com composition of rose in the air. Each of five soap bubble uh, liquids uh, is impregnated with one of the top five components of rose. Each one is blown or diffused separately and forms a spatial field containing the corresponding rose scent component. You cannot only poke the bubbles and smell the individual scent, but also just stand and immerse yourself in the combined scent, the scent of rose. Uh, theme number three, scent-driven communication. What is smell for us? In the world of flora and fauna, smell is a communication signal or pheromones for reproduction and survival. However, in the human world, there is no such pheromone in a scientific sense. And due to the societal and cultural changes happening over time, the role of olfaction is changing. It is not an exaggeration to say that in the world of Kodo, the play that shares the world of imagination among players while enjoying metaphors with smells, smell carries information. For example, the dry aspect of a fragrant wood becomes a metaphor for the dry sky in winter. Along with the tea ceremony and the art of flower arranging, Kodo is one of three classical refinements in, that developed into formalized ceremonies in the 16th century Muromachi period in Japan. The practice utilizes fragrant wood to create a space for different time and space, and is often accompanied by smelling games known as Genjiko and Kumiko, among others. Such a sophisticated use of smell only belongs to humans. Now that the role of olfaction is changing over time, would it be possible for us to explore the possibility more? Example, example works. Um, olfactory games, it was a smell, um, it was the work that where a smell is used as Morse code. For over 10 years, I gave a course uh, 
on olfactory art at the Royal Academy of Arts in the Netherlands, where uh, students had to make games uh, based on uh, olfaction. As an example, uh, I introduced them uh, like um, olfactory memory game and olfactory duck duck goose, etc. The students' imagination knows no boundaries. More than 70 games were being developed over the past years. And uh, I have a publication uh, based on this. Uh, you can find it on my website. And I think a PDF is free to download. Um, uh, the work number two, Kyoto Love, Love Story. <laughs> Um, it was a kind of workshop, performance workshop in between. Well, it is uh, the work uh, where uh, a smell carries a metaphor. Uh, in the world of uh, the tale of Genji that was written about uh, in 1000 AC, the, encount the encounter between men and women took place with bamboo blinds in between, and it was not even allowed to speak directly. Communication was uh, made through a messenger, like a maid, or poetry, or fragrances. Kyoto love story is a blind date event conforming to this communication protocol. It was an experiment of order communication in the high cultural context. For example, there was a man who gave a yuzu, a metaphor of the winter actually, um, winter solstice, sol solstice, to a woman. Yuzu is a Japanese original citrus fruit which is very aromatic like bergamot. Here, the aroma of yuzu is used as a medium to carry compassions such as I hope you get warm I hope you get warm with a yuzu bath. You would not catch a cold when taking yuzu bath at the winter solstice. So it was a caring message from a man to a woman. It happened in a workshop and it, uh, such metaphors took place a lot in this workshop. And uh, actually, um, Professor Yoko Iwasaki is writing about it, um, writing a paper about it. Um, a theme number four, scent-driven movement. Some of my works exclude visual elements and let visitors move around space by relying only on odor. Like a dog sniffing to the right and to the left, you feel the difference in concentration and you can find the source of the smell. It is also an experiment in omnidirectional smelling. Example works. Invisible white. It was in a collaboration between uh, architect and me. It was a pavilion, actually. It was a huge installation. Invisible white is a piece where you walk around by relying only on order in a blank space. The space has no corners, no shadows, and therefore you have no sense of distance and orientation. Three orders flowing into the space, each with its own timing, results in the permanent change of spatial scent. It is like invisible RGB gradation. As you proceed, you smell the different scents. Work number two. Olfactory Labyrinth uh, version 2. Olfactory Labyr Labyrinth version 2 is a true physical maze where you have to follow the same smell from the, the entrance to reach the exit. 
you are required to distinguish four woody scents from each other. Sometimes you really get stuck if you make a mistake. <laughs> Olfactory Labyrinth uh, version 4. Olfact Olfactory Labyrinth uh, version 4 is a maze with a game-like element where you are supposed to find three invisible cherry blossom trees. Bottles are hung in a matrix of nine by nine. As you get close to the invisible cherry blossom, the intensity of psychophysics, uh, sorry, intensity of the scent increases step by step. It is inspired by the uh, weber uh, fechner law on psychophysics, the logarithmic uh, relation between the actual change in the physical stimulus and the perceived change. The concentration increases in three steps in multiple of 33 as a result of many experimentations. The level number one is 0.00%, the level number two is 0.01%, and the level number three is 0.33%, uh, and the level number four was 0.2%. Ten percent. Okay, I have. Uh, I hope I have shown you uh, some interesting works, and here I will talk about my future perspectives. An artist is, uh, I think, a person who keeps asking questions such as um, what is humanity and uh, what is life through um, powerful and aesthetical works. I might put the question in other words and ask, what possibilities are hidden in the human sense of smell? If I may use an analogy of an academic method, my questioning and approach as an artist might be like this. I, my questioning and approach is hypothesis, uh, final work is conclusion, and audience experience is a proof, or a witness, actually. I form conclusions actually, while I imagine how uh, the audience would interact with uh, the work or with the scent. So I will keep on doing this. Recently, I have started to create uh, works to research poetical relationships between the olfactory art, now between olfactory and the tactile uh, and the visual sense, so all in one, olfactory sense, tactile sense, and visual sense. Like in the work, uh, tangible sense, actually. I believe that by doing many more experiments, I hope I will pursue to expand the possibilities of human olfaction and let it evolve even further. Okay. Um, 30 minutes. <laughs> What's a short presentation? Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, if you have uh, any question, please make use of this chance. Hello. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, wait. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Abba, and I nice. just wanted to say 
I found your presentation extremely fascinating. Thank you. Um, yes, haven't seen anything like this before. And um, I was curious as to how you went about um, where you have, I think you said it was a scentscape where you capture the smell of different locations within a city. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how were you able to capture them? And uh, that was my first question. And mm -hmm. then I was also curious about the work you did with, I think you said it was the juice of war. Mm -hmm. And how did you go about reconstructing it since this was something that had already happened in the past? And okay. what did it actually smell like? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the first question, uh, um, well, capturing a scent, uh, I think if you use a device like uh, Headspace, uh, um, you will uh, get the data. But in my case, I um, collect the materials, original materials from the city or the environment. For example, in the past, uh, when I walked around in the city of Eindhoven in uh, the Netherlands I, with a workshop participant, they said that the city smells like a garbage. Okay, let's then uh, collect uh, the scent of the garbage uh, by actually cleaning the garbage by oh. the the textile or like a tissue paper uh, okay. with alcohol and then wipe it and put it in a, uh, ethanol or vodka. I use vodka a lot because it is safe. And then um, manually extract from that tissue paper. Okay. So yeah, this this workshop of extraction workshop, um, I'm giving a lot, and maybe regularly I hope to do it online, also, um, like Zoom. It is it is very simple and easy to do. It is a little bit like making a fruit uh, fruit liquor <laughs> at home, so uh, it's not difficult. Um, yeah, and that kind of a uh, tincture method it's called tincture or tincture method maceration also i use a lot or like um i'm i have a tea here uh this is called infuse method so um extracting a uh, scent from material um there are a lot of different ways to do and different mediums um i use a lot a uh, tincture method and um, yeah, the same method I applied for this uh, juice of war Hiroshima Nagasaki, actually. I bought, <laughs> I bought um, uh, uh, a lot of different kind of meat at the supermarket. And uh, well, when I wrote, uh, when, when I read about um, the bombing, uh, I read that it was first a uh, strong flash and burned the skin everywhere. So every everyone became black at one second. So um, I burned uh, the meat on the barbecue grill, actually. I really burned and burned and burned and made black everything. And then I uh, let them dry in the sun for, for two weeks. It was actually like that in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was in August and it was very hot. It didn't rain. So uh, actually it was dried in a, in a beautiful sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, so then I sliced them and then extracted the scent from there uh, with the tincture method. So um, yeah, the smell was um, yeah indeed quite uh, strong or unbearable uh, when it was uh, when it was dried and when it was extracted it was less uncomfortable and it was okay to it was just okay to exhibit and uh, well it is kind of important to have some kind of manner for uh, the audience if it's uh, harmful um 
it is not good. So um, yeah, it was on the edge <laughs> because I became depressed myself mm. by mm. scent. Yeah, I realized that scent can make you depressed. Um, yeah, I was de depressed really for three days when working with this. But then it became milder when it was extracted. So um, it was just okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you too. Thank you very much. Yeah. And from Camille, uh, thank you for the fascinating presentation. Which of your work uh, was the most challenging to create? That's uh, interesting question. Uh, it's not possible to compare actually with every work it's all the time uh, uh, I'm developing everything from scratch and uh, I do a lot of experimentations and not knowing uh, what the result could become and but trying to achieve something and uh, to 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 head to the direction of the image that I have in mind but if I may name one uh, then it was a viral perfume uh, that was the work that uh, won an award, a Sadakichi Award at Art and Olfaction Award uh, last year. It was about uh, coronavirus. And uh, it was made in coronavirus time. <laughs> so the reason why it was challenging was because of the production process. Um, yeah, I quickly show you um, with the... Uh, Uh, sharing a screen what kind of work I'm talking about Yeah, quickly show you the uh, video that is easier. Mm. It was um, it was shown in the context of smell it exhibition in Bremen in Germany. Under the black light, you can see the traces of uh, fragrance. But under the normal light, it is completely transparent. And I thought it was a bit like a coronavirus. <laughs> we cannot see coronavirus and we cannot see fragrance. So I made a, I used the fragrance as a metaphor for coronavirus and I made a accord with the metaphor of uh, mutations when so different fragrance was combined in the air it became the smell of uh, white lily that is uh, for uh, to contribute to the death caused by the coronavirus this was the work and the reason why it was challenging was that um I had to develop this work under the uh, strict uh, circumstances uh, of a coronavirus um, I didn't know if I could fly or not. And um, yeah, so I produced this work under uh, intense communication with the Germany side and asking details of the space and the pedestals and all this. And I hoped I would be able to bring the perfumes perfumes by myself in a suitcase, but uh, it was not allowed to travel back then. 
So I had to ship the fragrance and the, the organizers were not even clear when the exhibition could take place. So we were doing everything under uh, circumstances that, that uncertain circumstances. So in that sense, it was very challenging. And um, I, okay, I noticed that, okay, it's not possible to fly at all then I have to ship the material. Okay, the shipping the fragrance uh, to Germany was challenging also because uh, the fragrance bottles were titled uh, Viral Perfume and the customs opened it and they thought, okay, we cannot enter the vi uh, virus. <laughs> so uh, and then it came back to me. It was not even uh, shipped actually. And and then I had to write a document with, with a lot of uh, safety document also. And then I explained that it is not Veer Veers. It is an artwork. <laughs> and like this, uh, it went back and forth between the customs. And uh, so it took time. And also uh, I was not there at the opening of the work, uh, which never happened before. Um, so developing something, some smell for uh, someone in a distance and show, showing it in the public, it was quite uh, hard to believe because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, normally I'm there at the location to check the final status of the scent and uh, ch um, change the concentration sometimes or change uh, the substance of smell, a bit more top note or whatever. Because it is the smell, smelling is different when you smell on a perfume strip and in the air is different. Also when smelling some scent here in Japan in a tropical environment and smelling it in a dry environment like in Germany and Paris, it, is, it smells completely different. So um, I have to be there to check, but I couldn't do that. So it was very challenging. And the uh, exhibition also opened uh, with no audience, actually. <laughs> Back then, we do you remember, uh, a lot of exhibitions were open uh, online. Like, um, yeah, it was visible to visit online, a lot of exhibitions. But this type of exhibition uh, never made sense online. So I heard that exhibition opened for no, no audience. <laughs> It, it was very bizarre, uh, but of course, uh, as planned, the, the people are working there. So the only the museum staff, they were, uh, I think, being, being able to enjoy the works. And uh, that was a bizarre exhibition and ex ex extreme and uh, challenging exhibition. So I re really remember this. Uh, work and exhibition and a time and uh, we are forgetting about it nowadays uh, how we were living through this but uh, I want to remember it still okay <laughs> yeah okay any other question okay one more one more work I can show oh uh, that was a bizarre uh, uh, it was also under Corona time. Uh, I I had to develop, so uh, I will show it. Also, one of my new work. Uh, it was in two thousand twenty, so it was uh, also in a Corona time. I had to. Fly to Paris under a very uh, uh, yeah how to say unknown uh, situation because back then there was no vaccine, so um, I was wearing the goggles and mask and face mask and everything when I was setting up, and it was for a party in Paris for a Mazda party, so.
Yeah, this was um, for uh, the mass the hundred years anniversary party uh, held in Paris under the Corona time, and uh, well, luckily enough, I could fly there, and I could uh, really smell and check. So I'm lucky, but <laughs> yeah, this is the. Uh, at least necessary for uh, olfactory art, I guess. Like in visual arts, like photography or sculpture, you can just ship a box and let them install. But in olfactory art, we cannot do that. We have to really go there and check in the space. Um, so this, this work was also uh, memorable for me because of this very, very hard condition. And we, we were also not uh, sure if the flight would fly or all this. And the uh, flight was expensive and um, very few flights were there in between uh, Europe and Japan back then. Um, the smell uh, can make you feel warmer or cooler that is the uh, the main uh, the principal uh, concept of this work and if we can make us uh, cooler or warmer uh, by means of smell we could contribute uh, with smell to uh, the global warming issues that 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 is what, what i thought and i proved it and it's actually really really works um everyone agreed that okay in this room it is cooler this room this is warmer without exception so uh yeah it was interesting without exception and normally with smell uh everyone smells differently and it is really individual taste and uh, but with this work everyone agrees so yeah, it's one new aspect of smell that I opened up, I feel like. And uh, recent years, I am dealing with a lot of uh, yeah social issues like this. I'm ready to do this. And um, I think it's time to do it for, for my, in my career. Before, I was more uh, purely into aesthetics. But now I'm ready to really uh, deal with the social issues. So, yeah. I hope uh, you look forward to my new works <laughs> in the future. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you have any other question, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Camille. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just uh, following up on what you just shared, which is also another very fascinating piece of work with um, the, the one where you talked about the smell making you feel cooler or warmer. Did the smell have to be at a high concentration to have that effect, or it was kind of low? Uh, it was in a space, so I okay. don't know how to compare it, but um, uh, yeah, was it, it has strong? to be, it, it had to be quite strong. Know. Yeah, it was just, I used um, a very compact uh, standard uh, diffuser. Okay. And um, it didn't have to be so strong because, um, for example, the, the smell that you that makes you warmer is a little bit peppery. And okay. if it's strong, uh, it's actually a lot of people uh, were sneeze, sneezing oh. in the space. So, yeah, it didn't have to be so strong and but it has to be um of course uh, noticeable but uh, the effect is there even without your your notice even okay. without you your attention to smell okay it it functions uh, right away in trigeminal nerves so okay. even okay. before or oh, you who realize that the scent is there even before that it is uh, activating the okay. trigeminal sense okay. so it's interesting eh? uh, smell um, works before we notice it uh, it's uh, quite scary also <laughs> um, 
That's really interesting. Um, that the uh, not too long ago, I was making a uh, body butter. Okay. And, yes, body butter, and I bought this ingredient. They said they call it a uh, lemon extract. It's uh -huh. an extract from lemon, but they called it cooling lemon extract. Oh. And I noticed that when I mixed it in the butter, and you smelled it, it gave you this cooling sensation as if you had <laughs> as if you had mint or menthol but there was yeah. no mint and there was no menthol in, wow. in the in, the, um, in mm -hmm. the extract yes but it somehow it had a cooling effect so if yeah. you washed your hands even if you washed your hands and you applied it to your hands you had this cooling effect and then wow. if you smelled it you also had that cooling effect so it sounds like you know um the trigeminal nerve or yes, stimulated yeah. and it gives you gives you that effect yeah i think it's possible that one of the substance was uh, cooling a uh, uh, tri trigger trigger yes yeah trigger yes. the the receptors one of the receptors of cooling uh, receptors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah yeah very interesting <laughs> yeah yeah, so recent years, I'm not only working on like uh, communication and all this, but also the different side of uh, olfaction mm -hmm. and actually scary side, uh, to, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, and now I'm developing a little bit, uh, again, um, social work which I'm showing in uh, actually in one week, I'm having an opening in Tokyo and it is about uh, uh, microplastic. And um, well, we we actually know about plastic problems and the use of plastic and we try to reduce. But the reason why uh, the, um, microplastic is eaten by uh, seabirds and fish is because of a smell again. Oh. It, I researched about it and there are scientists uh, writing about it. Uh, it is um, caused by a substance called uh, dimethyl sulfide. And it is uh, for perfumer, it is quite common ingredient. Uh, it is. It smells like seaweed. It uh, flies uh, very quickly, and uh, I have this uh, dimethyl sulfide here. It, it is bottled, and um, this smell is actually uh, originated from a plankton normally, and that the, the this be functions as an infochemical for seabirds and fish that uh, food is there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the plankton. Uh, however, um, while a plastic is floating in the ocean, uh, plastic absorbs a uh, smell quite quickly. <laughs> you know that from uh, the, the food trays and it, it smells like food immediately. It cannot be washed away. Um, a plastic absorbs uh, dimethyl sulfide and releases it and absorbs and releases and that's why the plastic became uh, like, uh, yeah, became like a food uh, smeller <laughs> for uh, mm -hmm. birds and uh, fish. So, okay. yeah, I, 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 I found it quite uh, sad. But uh, yeah, then, then I, I'm making a question like, yeah, then is it possible to create a plastic that doesn't absorb mm -hmm. or smell or like uh, to cancel the smell by means of, for example, a charcoal powder or whatever, like uh, that kind of uh, artistic uh, conceptual uh, work I'm presenting. And it's an interface where you can smell the dimethyl sulfide oh, okay. uh, easier and uh, comfortable and uh, imagine the feeling of a bird and a <laughs> turtle <laughs> and a fish. Yeah, so that is the work I'm presenting next week and I have some more works this uh, autumn uh, yeah to come and uh, yeah I hope uh, to have more presentations uh, in the future also on my on my private academy well I shall uh, quickly the last uh, 
web website uh, for PR. <laughs> and moment. So I am having a uh, olfactory art lab uh, at my atelier. It's private, of course, uh, but I'm going to I'm planning a lot of a course, uh, online course, like uh, extraction okay. workshop and uh, like a coder workshop. I gave before during Corona time like this on Zoom mm -hmm. and I'm planning more like uh, I will announce. Uh, okay. On my website in the future and uh, yeah it is a fragrant art course I'm giving in japanese at the moment but um yeah it's going to become english mm -hmm. and it is a basic perfumery course and uh, with a touch of artistic uh creativity okay yeah and uh i'm trying to expand more and more so yeah and you can follow my Instagram, for example, um, keynote. The, uh, oh yeah, sharing screen. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> not this one. My Instagram is. I'm making mistake. <laughs> Not this window. Um yeah, I think Instagram and Facebook is easy to follow. Yeah, my home is um, this one. Yeah, I have an Instagram site uh, announcing a lot of works and uh, showing new works. And uh, okay, I I will follow you on Instagram. Yes, <laughs> and uh, Facebook site and uh, yeah, and I hope to keep in touch and yes. uh, yeah and thank you for participating and yes. uh, I hope you don't mind uh, to be on my YouTube uh, as, as a part of recordings no I don't mind that's fine <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> yeah, that's fine yes, yes. okay that's so thank fine. you very much and thank see you. you again okay thank you so much thank you bye bye, bye.